prostate cancer now and the effectiveness of various treatments. Well, with me now is Professor Freddie Hamdy, who is Nuffield Professor of Surgery at the University of Oxford. Hello to you. Hello to you. So, what is PROTECT, first of all? PROTECT stands for Prostate Testing for Cancer and Treatment Study. It's the largest randomised controlled trial of treatment effectiveness in PSA detected prostate cancer in men aged between the age of 50 and 69. So what was the main, so the main findings? And the, 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 the trial was about uh, detecting men by PSA testing in the community, inviting them for the blood test and if the blood test was abnormal, inviting them for biopsies and we tested in that way 82,000 men over a period of 10 years. Within these 82,000 men, we diagnosed approximately 3,000 cancers. Of these 3,000 cancers, the majority were clinically localized, which means that the disease is contained within the gland, at least clinically. And of those, two-thirds have agreed to be randomized to either surgery through radical prostatectomy or radiation, so radiotherapy, external beam radiation, or a program of surveillance, which we called active monitoring. We followed them up for uh, 10 years average and we looked at the effect of the treatment on men who died of prostate cancer, men who died of all causes and how the disease progressed over time. So what would you say were your main conclusions? The main conclusions were that if you are a man in that age group and you are diagnosed through PSA testing with prostate cancer and the disease is localised, your risk of dying of the disease is very low at an average of 10 years, about 1%. The risk of uh, dying of all causes is about 10%. And we did not find any differences between the treatment arms. Irrespective of the treatment that were allocated, the mortality was the same. However, when we looked at the treatment effects in terms of disease progression, like the disease spreading to the bones, for example, we found that the radical treatments reduce the risk of progression by about half. And would you say there are so many variables in terms of what the patient wants, it's difficult for you to say this is the best thing to do? So the, what the patients want is information. They want information so that they can make a decision. So in many cancers, patients don't have a lot of choice. The oncologist or the treating physician tells them this is the best treatment for you. In prostate cancer, it is paradoxical because it's different, there are choices to be made and there is a trade-off to be made between the benefits of the treatments and the side effects that these treatments produce. So in Protect we did a parallel uh, study analysing the patient reported outcomes very carefully to see what all these treatments cause in terms of short, medium and long-term long side effects. And this is going to be very helpful for patients to decide do they accept the reduction in disease progression but accept also the side effects or do they prefer to take the risk to take the risk of slightly higher risk of the disease progressing versus not having the side effects? A very individual choice there. Very much so. What would you say is your biggest challenge in doing the research? Uh, I think it was uh, randomization. So randomization is a process by which men do not select their treatment. The researcher does not select the treatment. The treatment is selected at random uh, and that is to avoid bias because if you introduce bias in research the results are not interpretable and the biggest challenge was to um, explain to the men that the uncertainty is sufficient for them to agree that one of these three options which are very different from each other will be what they will receive and we've been very successful with that fortunately. You're happy with the outcome? And you've, you've said uh, earlier that th there's so much information now for patients and physicians. Yes. Are they sort of too swamped with information or is information always a good thing? No, I don't think so. It's about the quality of information and the amount of counselling that they receive. And I think that counselling needs to start before even they have the PSA test. Because once they get the PSA test, it's a snowball. The PSA is high, they get a biopsy then etc. It, it, it snowballs to a diagnosis and potentially to very difficult decision making. So the patient needs to know, or the man needs to know, very early on what he gets himself into by being tested, by having a diagnosis, and then what the consequences are. And you're presenting your findings on Monday? Monday morning there's a plenary session where I'll be discussing the studies. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.